The rated R superstar Adam Copeland, better known to you guys as Cope or Edge if you're an old school guy like that, has been making the media rounds, doing lots of interviews, too many interviews, too way too many interviews. See, I, I listen to all of these fucking things, that's why I gotta do that for my job, and he says the same fucking thing five times, five different interviews, the same interviews, same questions, same answers. God, I feel like I'm living in goddamn Groundhog's Day listening to this guy try to talk and explain his story to the masses. But it was in this interview on Insight with Chris Van Vliet where they strayed off the trail a little bit. And Chris asked Adam a simple question about his legacy. The legacy of Edge, Adam Copeland, and the history of the wrestling business, to which Adam kind of scoffed at, or balked at, or whatever adjective you want to insert into that statement, Copeland didn't really seem to agree or care about a legacy. He doesn't believe in that. Check out this clip. Your legacy was already well cemented in WWE, and... I think that the way that things ended in WWE was so perfect, right? You're yeah. in Toronto celebrating 25 years, bang of a match with Sheamus. Yeah. What does this add on to your legacy now with what you're doing in AEW? Uh, you know, I, I've, I think the legacy thing, I, I don't really buy into it. I think legacies are created by the people that make the videos packages and, and the people who book. And they decide whether you have a legacy or not. So I don't get wrapped up in it. Um, you know, it's not like it's not like I'm the New York Islanders in the early '80s, where you're legitimately winning four Stanley Cups in a row. That's a legacy. Okay, this is entertainment. You know, uh, is there really a legacy? I, I, I personally don't look at it that way. I mean, of course, there's a legacy, and I, I don't buy it. My legacy, to me, and this is how I look at it: Am I raising good human beings? Mm -hmm. That's my legacy, not what I do in spandex. So Adam's fucking insane. I get the point. I do. Don't get me wrong. I get it's a it's entertainment. It's a fake phony business. It's not even a real sport. The Booker man puts you in the spot. The fans either like you or they don't. The storylines are written for you. I get it. But there's still a legacy in professional wrestling. I don't I can't believe that a guy like that can have a career like that and then just go, "Well, it's just something I did for work, but my real legacy is what kind of father I am to my kids, which is true, by the way. That's the important thing. But, man, to just sweep your entire legacy under the rug like that and just say, I don't really buy it. I don't believe in legacies. I kind of think that's bullshit. Even though it's a fake, phony sport, even though wrestling is entertainment and scripted and the booker man picks your position... You still earn that. You fight for that. The fans get behind you. You build momentum. You give your blood, sweat, and your tears out there. You prove to everybody that you are the greatest at your craft. It's the same thing with the Hall of Fame. Everybody, oh, it's not even a real Hall of Fame. It's a joke. Some Hall of Fame. Yeah, I... it's to honor your career. Honor your legacy. And Edge has... A legacy bigger than most people would ever hope to have in professional wrestling. This is a guy that's been around since the Attitude Era. He was a huge part of the Attitude Era, by the way. Uh, you know, most people talk about your Stone Colds and your Rocks and your Mick Foley's and Undertakers and everybody at the top of the card during the Attitude Era, but look at that undercard. Look at the Brood, for example. You have the Brood on your undercard. Edge and Christian, they're just there mixing it up in the tag division. I mean, my God. All the championships Adam has won over his career, all the amazing matches that this guy has had, his brutal feuds that he's had, his feuds with Cena, his feud with Matt Hardy, for Christ's sakes, main eventing against The Undertaker at WrestleMania, live sex celebration, I think the ladder matches, my God, it's endless. And then to be able to come back after 10 years off, nine years off, after, you know, 
uh, fucking spinal stenosis and neck fusions and shit to just, I mean, my, who would have ever thought he'd ever see a wrestling ring again? But here he is. And for him to just sweep, I don't really believe in all that. Like, it's humble. I, I respect where he's coming from. I get the take. You know, family is most important. This is just my job. This is entertainment. But you are one of the greatest to ever do your job ever. And for me, to me, that means you are leaving a legacy behind. People look up to you. People aspire to be like you. People watch your matches and go, wow, I want to do that when I grow up. The promos, his mic work. This guy, the money in the bank thing. He was the first to do the money in the bank. That cash in, that was epic. Iconic. I think Edge is doing himself a disservice by just brushing off his entire legacy, his entire amazing, fantastic career. And, and like Chris Van Vliet said, he's like, of course you have a legacy. And Edge pushed back again. No, I don't believe in that. And, of course, he said the same exact thing when he was interviewed by uh, Rene Paquette on uh, some sort of AEW gimmick that they're doing now. Same interview, same thing. I just don't get it. I mean, I do get it. I get where he's coming from, but this man has to acknowledge the impact that he's left on the business. And he has to acknowledge that, yes, this is entertainment, but there are still goals that are achieved. There's milestones that are reached. There's levels to this shit that most people never even fucking get to sniff, let alone just exist in for 10 years, you know? Edge has done it all in this business. And I think when he looks back on his career, and I know that he, I mean, even when you look in his gym, you know, this interview took place in his gym, as you've seen there, and in on the back wall, I mean, he's a mark for himself. He's got all of his belts. He's got his money in the bank briefcases hanging up and everything. Like, because those represent trophies for the business. Those represent your achievements. Achie- Did I say achievements? Your achievements. Your achievements in the business. Obviously, those mean something to him. Unless fucking Betty made him put them up on the wall or something like that. But somewhere deep down, I think he he does recognize the impact he made on the business. And I just think, you know, I, I think maybe he was just trying to say the family's more important. You know, he's trying to find a way to say this is what's important to me. But in doing so, he dismissed a hell of a fucking wrestling career that most people just don't get to have. And I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if it's a real sport or not. The shit that happens in that ring is real. People get hurt. People give their blood, sweat, and tears. They give everything they have. Just to entertain those fans. It's physical. It ended. Look, Edge is living proof of how physical wrestling can be. And to give all of that and just say, "Eh, I don't really buy into it. I think he's doing himself a disservice. I think Edge has one of the greatest legacies in professional wrestling, period, end of story. Here's a guy who came out of the crowd, basically, right? You know, came right out of the crowd of... It was fucking WrestleMania six, hopped the rail and he joined the brood and fucking it was on from there, man. Set the fucking set the standard for a ladder match, reinvented what it, what a ladder match was, invented this TLC match. The rated R superstar reinvented himself again. From, you know, you think you know me to the brood to the kazoos and the fucking, for those, the benefit of flash photography when that was a thing. You guys remember flash photography? Remember when that was a thing? You remember disposable cameras? You went to the store, you bought a little camera that came in like a little cardboard thing and you didn't have to put no film in it or anything. It was just there. And then you take your pictures and you got to put the flash on because if you don't put the flash on, it's going to be dark. And then a lot of them came out blurry anyway. So out of the fucking, what, 15, 20 pictures that the camera gives you, 30 pictures, 10 of them are actually good because everything else is blurry or streaky or it's got the red eye thing going on. 
Adam Copeland has a great legacy in this business, and I think that he should recognize that. But what do you guys think? I've talked about this enough. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Where does Edge rank in the entire history of professional wrestling as far as legacies go? Obviously, a Hall of Fame career well earned. He's done literally everything there is to do in this business. A perennial main eventer, a mega star, recognizable, a guy who's transitioned into Hollywood, so to speak, television, the small screen. Let me know your thoughts on Adam Copeland, or maybe you agree with Adam. Maybe you're like, ah, it's just it's fake phony entertainment business. You're just putting on a show for people in, in your spandex, and then you go home. And then what really matters is what happens once you go home. And legacies for, vi and that's the thing too. He's like, this is video legacies are for the people that make the video packages and and want to decide what the legacy is. And that's true to an extent. If Adam got on bad terms with Triple H suddenly, boy, his WWE legacy would be a lot less uh, memorable, right? You know, you uh, there's they have their ways of wiping you out of video packages and just not bringing your name up. When you speak of the greatest of all time, look at guys like the Macho Man Randy Savage. Literally one of, still to this day, one of the most famous wrestling names in the world. I went into a fucking store the other day wearing a Macho Man shirt that I've worn on this show a few times. And, and some fucking old guy behind the counter is like, oh, you're wearing a throwback shirt, huh? People love the Macho Man. How often do you hear Macho Man talked about, represented in, on TV? You don't. You just don't. It could be because he banged Stephanie and, and Triple H might be salty about that a little bit. But either way, legacy is certainly in the hands of whoever's got the pencil. That I agree with, but I think Adam has undoubtedly left... An amazing legacy behind, and I think it should be honored, and it should be treated with the respect that it deserves. Bro, thanks for checking out the video. You can find more great videos by hitting the subscribe button. And bro, while you're down there, hit that like button, leave a comment, and all of that other crap. Bro.